You have a choice. Remain in the illusion or awaken to your limitless power. Which will you choose? This question isn't just a dramatic introduction. It's the key to understanding the very nature of your existence. Imagine for a moment that everything around you, your experiences, your struggles, your limitations, is part of a grand illusion. But why does this illusion exist? And more importantly, how can you break free from it? To grasp this, let's look at one of the oldest metaphors in philosophy, Plato's Allegory of the Cave. In this allegory, prisoners are trapped in a cave, chained in such a way that they can only see shadows cast on the wall in front of them. For these prisoners, the shadows are their reality. They have no concept of the real world outside the cave. Now, what if you were one of these prisoners? And what if I told you that you too might be living in such a cave, mistaking shadows for the truth? The ancient Indian sage Ramana Maharshi said, the world is illusory, Brahman alone is real. This means that what we see, what we touch, what we believe to be real is only a projection. The true reality the essence of existence lies beyond this illusion. The journey of awakening is about breaking free from these shadows and stepping into the light of truth. But how do we even begin to do that? By recognizing that our perception of reality is limited, we take the first step toward liberation. We start to see that there's more to life than meets the eye. And this realization leads us to question everything we've been taught everything we've assumed to be true. Understanding the simulation. So if the world we live in is an illusion or a simulation, as some might say, what does that mean for us? To explore this, let's turn to the ideas of simulation theory and how it challenges our understanding of reality. Simulation theory suggests that our world is not the base level of reality, but rather a kind of artificial construct much like a highly advanced video game. But don't worry, this isn't about some sci-fi fantasy. Philosophers have been asking these questions for centuries. One of the earliest thinkers to question the nature of reality was René Descartes. In his meditations, Descartes pondered whether the entire physical world could be an illusion created by a powerful deceiver. His famous phrase, I think, therefore I am, was his way of grounding himself in something he knew was real, his own consciousness. Just as Descartes doubted the material world, we must begin to question our own perceived limitations. What if our thoughts, our beliefs and our experiences are just part of a larger program? What if we've been conditioned to accept this simulation as the only reality? This idea isn't just philosophical, it's deeply spiritual too. In Hinduism, there's the concept of Maya, the illusion that veils the true nature of reality. Maya keeps us bound to the material world, making us believe that this physical existence is all there is. But the ancient sages knew that there was something beyond this illusion. By recognizing the illusory nature of reality, we can begin to break free from the simulation and move toward a deeper understanding of our true nature. The question then becomes, how do we transcend this illusion and awaken to our true power? Consciousness is the key. If reality is a simulation, then consciousness is the key to unlocking its secrets. But what does this mean? According to Neville Goddard, consciousness is the only true reality. Everything else, your circumstances, your challenges, your external world is merely a reflection of your inner state. So if you want to change your reality, you must first change your consciousness. This is a powerful realization because it shifts the focus from the external world to the internal. You are no longer a passive observer in life. You are an active creator. Philosopher George Berkeley had a similar idea in his theory of idealism, 
he argued that physical things exist only as perceptions held by the mind. In other words, the material world doesn't exist independently of our consciousness, it's shaped by it. This brings us to a profound conclusion. The world you experience is a projection of your inner reality, and if that's the case, then you have the power to reshape your life by shifting your consciousness. In Sufism, a mystical branch of Islam, this concept is expressed through the idea that the physical world is a veil that hides the divine reality. The world as we see it is a kind of illusion, and through altering our consciousness, we can begin to perceive the deeper divine truth behind it. So, if everything is a projection of our consciousness, the real work of awakening begins within. By shifting our internal state, our beliefs, our thoughts, our emotions, we can literally change the simulation we live in. Societal conditioning and limiting beliefs. Now, if consciousness shapes our reality, why do so many of us feel trapped by limitations? The answer lies in societal conditioning. From the moment we're born, we're bombarded with rules, norms and expectations that shape how we see the world. We're told what's possible, what's realistic and what we should aim for in life. But who sets these rules and why do we follow them without question? Noam Chomsky, a well-known political philosopher, introduced the concept of manufactured consent. This is the idea that societal rules are often created by those in power to control the masses, to keep people in a state of limitation and conformity. Think about it. From school to work, we're conditioned to believe in a certain version of reality, one that's often focused on material success, external validation, and following a predetermined path. But what if these rules are simply mechanisms to keep us limited? In yoga philosophy, particularly in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, we find a similar teaching. Patanjali talks about the importance of breaking free from samskaras, or conditioned mental patterns, in order to experience true liberation. These patterns are like mental programs that keep us running on autopilot, preventing us from realizing our full potential. By questioning these societal rules and conditioned beliefs, we can start to break free from the limitations imposed on us. This isn't about rebelling against society. It's about understanding that many of the beliefs you hold are not your own. They're the product of societal programming. And once you realize this, you can begin to reprogram your mind and create a reality that aligns with your true desires. The prison of limiting beliefs. Our limiting beliefs are like the strings of code that keep the simulation running. These beliefs shape the way we think, act and experience life. But here's the thing. Most of these beliefs aren't even true. They're based on flawed premises, yet they guide our entire lives. And when we operate from false beliefs, we end up creating a reality that doesn't reflect our true potential. Let's think about this logically. In the study of logic, a flawed premise will always lead to a flawed conclusion. If you believe you're not worthy of success or happiness, everything you do will be filtered through that belief, leading to a life of limitation. But here's the good news. Just as faulty code in a computer program can be rewritten, so too can your limiting beliefs be reprogrammed. The Bible speaks directly to this idea in Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a powerful message about the importance of breaking free from the mental prison of societal conditioning and limiting beliefs. Renewing your mind means questioning the beliefs that have been imposed on you and replacing them with empowering truths. It's about transforming the way you think so that you can create a reality that aligns with your highest potential. So how do you begin to rewrite these limiting beliefs? It starts with awareness. 
becoming conscious of the beliefs that are holding you back. Once you recognize them, you can begin to challenge and replace them with beliefs that support your growth and expansion. Seeing the code behind reality. To truly awaken, we must begin to see the code behind reality. This may sound abstract, but modern science and ancient wisdom both point to the same conclusion. Our consciousness is not just a passive observer, it actively shapes the world we experience. One of the most fascinating concepts in quantum mechanics is the observer effect. This phenomenon shows that the mere act of observing a particle can change its state. In other words, reality is not fixed. It responds to the consciousness that observes it. This idea echoes the teachings of Buddhism, particularly the Diamond Sutra, which teaches that form is emptiness and emptiness is form. What this means is that reality is not as solid as we think. It's more fluid, more malleable, shaped by the way we perceive and interact with it. The world we see is a reflection of our inner state and by changing our consciousness, we can change the world around us. So what does this mean for your life? It means that the limitations you see, the obstacles, the challenges, are not as real as they seem. They're part of the simulation, part of the code that you've been programmed to believe in. But by shifting your consciousness, by changing the way you observe reality, you can literally rewrite the code of your life. This is a powerful realization, one that gives you the ability to shape your reality in ways you never thought possible. Meditation as the tool to hack the simulation. If consciousness shapes reality, then meditation is the tool that allows us to hack the simulation. Through meditation, we can quiet the noise of the external world and tune into the deeper reality that lies beneath the surface. In the mystical text, The Cloud of Unknowing, it's said that true spiritual understanding comes not from knowledge, but from unknowing, from letting go of our intellectual grasp on reality and experiencing it directly through stillness. Meditation isn't just about relaxation, it's about altering our state of consciousness to access higher levels of awareness. In Taoism, there's the story of Zhuangzi's butterfly dream, where he dreamt he was a butterfly, only to awaken and question whether he was a man dreaming he was a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming he was a man. This story reveals the fluid nature of reality and how meditation can help us navigate between different states of consciousness blurring the line between the waking world and the dream world. When you meditate, you begin to see that the boundaries between reality and illusion are not as fixed as they seem. You start to experience the world in a more fluid, flexible way, allowing you to manipulate the simulation from within. This is the essence of spiritual practice, not just escaping the illusion, but learning to work within it as a conscious creator. Through meditation, you gain the tools to hack the simulation and awaken to your true power. Rewriting your past through revision. One of the most revolutionary ideas in Neville Goddard's teachings is the concept of revision. Imagine being able to change your past, not physically, but mentally, by revisiting it in your imagination and altering the way you perceive it. This might sound impossible, but when we understand the power of consciousness, we realize that the past, too, is part of the simulation. And if everything is a projection of our inner state, then revisiting and reshaping the past in our minds can change our present and future reality. Dr. Joe Dispenza a modern teacher of neuroplasticity, explains how our brains can be rewired through thought alone. When we replay past events in our minds, we reinforce the neural pathways associated with those memories. But what if, instead of reliving the pain or limitations of the past, 
we could revise it. Neville Goddard taught that by imagining a different outcome, by rewriting the story in our minds, we can change how it affects our present reality. This idea connects with Aristotle's concept of catharsis, the process of releasing and healing emotional wounds. Through revision, we experience an emotional release that can heal our past and reshape our future. It's not about denying what happened, but about transforming how we perceive it. When you change your perception of the past, you change the trajectory of your life. This is the power of consciousness, to not only create the future, but to heal and rewrite the past as well. Living in the end to manifest desires. Neville Goddard's teaching of living in the end is one of the most powerful tools for manifesting your desires. The idea is simple yet profound. If you want to bring something into your life, you must first embody the feeling of already having it. This isn't just wishful thinking, it's a shift in consciousness that aligns you with the reality you want to create. Philosopher William James spoke about the power of belief and how our beliefs shape our reality. If you believe that something is already yours, your mind will begin to shape your reality to match that belief. The Bible echoes this wisdom in Mark 11:24. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Living in the end means fully accepting the reality of your desire fulfilled, even before it manifests physically. But how do you do this? It's not about pretending or forcing yourself to believe something that feels untrue. Instead, it's about tapping into the feeling of your wish fulfilled. What would it feel like to already have what you desire? How would you act? How would your thoughts change? By embodying these feelings and thoughts, you begin to shift your consciousness, aligning yourself with the reality where your desires are already manifest. Living in the end is about more than just manifesting material things. It's about realizing your power as a conscious creator. When you live from the end, you step into your role as the architect of your reality, shaping your life from the inside out. Awakening within the dream. The journey of awakening is not just about changing your external reality. It's about waking up within the dream of life itself. Philosopher Teilhard de Chardin spoke of human evolution as not just a physical process, but a spiritual one. Awakening is part of this evolution, a shift in consciousness where we begin to see through the illusion of the simulation and recognize our true nature as spiritual beings. In Tibetan Buddhism, there's a practice called dream yoga, where practitioners learn to awaken within their dreams. The goal is not just to control the dream, but to recognize that both the dream world and the waking world are illusions. When we awaken within the dream, we gain the power to shape it consciously. This practice teaches us that the boundaries between waking life and dream life are not as solid as they seem. Both are part of the same illusion, and by awakening within the dream, we can begin to transcend the illusion altogether. In your own life, Awakening within the dream means recognizing that you are not just a passive participant in the simulation, you are the dreamer. The world you experience is shaped by your consciousness, and by becoming aware of this, you gain the power to shape the dream itself. This is the essence of spiritual awakening, realizing that you are both the creator and the experiencer of reality. Letting go of the ego. One of the biggest obstacles to awakening is the ego. The ego is the part of us that clings to identity, to separation, to control. It's the voice in our heads that tells us we are separate from the world, that we are limited by our circumstances. But to awaken to our true power, we must learn to let go of the ego. In many spiritual traditions, 
this process is described as a kind of death and rebirth. In Christianity, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus symbolize the death of the ego and the rebirth into higher consciousness. Similarly, in Sufism, the concept of fana refers to the annihilation of the self in order to experience unity with the divine. Letting go of the ego is not about losing yourself. It's about transcending the limited self and awakening to the infinite self. When we let go of the ego, we stop identifying with our limitations and fears. We begin to see that we are not the small separate beings we once thought we were. Instead, we are part of something much larger, something divine. This process of ego dissolution is not easy. It requires surrender, humility and trust. But it's only by letting go of the ego that we can fully awaken to our true power and potential. Balancing action and non-action. As we awaken to our role as conscious creators, we must learn to balance action with non-action. This is a delicate balance. On one hand, we must take deliberate action to shape our reality. On the other hand, we must trust the flow of the universe and allow things to unfold naturally. In Taoism, this concept is known as Wu Wei, or effortless action. Wu Wei teaches that true mastery comes not from forcing things to happen, but from aligning ourselves with the natural flow of life. When we're in alignment, things happen effortlessly, without struggle. This doesn't mean we sit back and do nothing. It means we take action from a place of ease and flow, trusting that the universe is working with us. Philosopher David Chalmers' dual aspect theory offers a similar perspective. He suggests that the mind has both an active and a passive aspect, and that true mastery comes from balancing these two. As conscious creators, we must learn when to act and when to let go. When we find this balance, we can manifest our desires with grace and ease, without unnecessary resistance. The Collective Mission Awakening is not just a personal journey, it's a collective mission. As we awaken to our true nature, we contribute to a larger movement of consciousness, a shift that is happening on a global scale. Philosopher Hegel spoke of this in his Philosophy of Spirit, where he described the evolution of human consciousness as a movement toward the absolute spirit. This is not just about individual enlightenment, it's about a collective awakening. In Mahayana Buddhism, the Bodhisattva path represents this collective mission. Bodhisattvas are beings who have attained enlightenment but choose to remain in the world to help others awaken. They delay their personal liberation in order to assist in the collective awakening of humanity. In many ways, we are all bodhisattvas, awakening not just for ourselves, but for the benefit of all beings. As you awaken, you become part of this larger mission. Your journey is not just about escaping the simulation. It's about helping others see the illusion for what it is and guiding them toward their own awakening. This is the true purpose of the Chosen Ones, to lift the veil of illusion, not just for ourselves, but for the world. Tools for Daily Spiritual Mastery Awakening is not a one-time event, it's a daily practice. To maintain your alignment with higher consciousness, you need tools for spiritual mastery. Swami Sivananda, a great yogi, emphasized the importance of consistent practice, meditation, yoga, and reflection, as the key to mastering the mind. These practices help you stay grounded in your spiritual truth, even as you navigate the challenges of daily life. One powerful tool for daily reflection comes from the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. In his Enchiridion, Epictetus teaches us to focus on what lies within our control and to release attachment to what we cannot change. This practice helps us stay aligned with our inner power, even in the face of external difficulties. 
by reflecting on our thoughts and actions each day, we can maintain our focus on our true purpose and continue to grow spiritually. These daily practices are not just about maintaining spiritual balance. They're about cultivating mastery over your mind and your reality. The more you practice, the more you strengthen your ability to shape the simulation from within, becoming a conscious creator of your own life. The awakening journey continues. The journey of awakening is ongoing. As you awaken from the simulation, rewrite limiting beliefs and embrace your role as a conscious creator, you begin to see that life is not a random series of events. It's a canvas waiting for you to paint. Khalil Gibran's words ring true. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. You are not just here to awaken yourself, but to transform the world around you. This journey is not meant to be taken alone. Share your experiences, your insights, and your growth with others. Let's build a community of awakening souls who can support one another on this path. Together, we can lift the veil of illusion, not just for ourselves, but for humanity. Now I want to hear from you. How are you awakening to your true power? What steps are you taking to break free from the illusion? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's continue this journey together.